water scarcity is a real issue for us as brewers. This is not a theoretical discussion. I think there is a chance that they will change in flavor. You're nothing without your brands. Welcome to The Big Question, the series from Euronews where we address some of the biggest questions on the business agenda. We're here in Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum and we're joined by Jakob Arab Andersen, the CEO of Carlsberg. Thank you for joining us. Obviously, we all know what Carlsberg beer, but um, you actually have lots of other brands of beer. Can you just remind us some of the, the other beers that you produce? You're happy to. How long uh, do you have? Uh, we, uh, we have 140 brands uh, globally, uh, so we sell our beers in 150 countries. Carlsberg is big. It's actually not our biggest brand. Our biggest brand globally is Tuborg. 1664, 1664 Blanc is a massive growth driver. Brooklyn Brewery is also a, a significant growth driver. Grimbergen, uh, uh, Summersby. Uh, I, I can tell you it's, uh, it's a thriving portfolio and it's one of the big key strengths of our business. That's the, uh, the strength of our brand portfolio, which in the end, uh, you're nothing without your brands. Climate change is one of the big topics here at Davos this year, and whilst it might not be immediately obvious how that's connected with alcohol, um, what threat does uh, climate change actually pose to the alcohol industry, and particularly brewing of beer? Yeah, so for us, uh, for us, it's a um, it's a massive thing. So when you look at the, how how beer is made, you can say water and barley are two of the main ingredients, and water scarcity is a real issue for us as brewers. And the second element is uh, is barley yields are falling due to climate change. So this is not a theoretical discussion. This is uh, having real impact on on our business, and that's also one of the reasons why I'm here to discuss solutions in terms of dealing with these climate issues. So how is it affecting Carlsberg so far and um, what can be done to, to adapt to, um, to climate change and to the issues that you're facing? So far we've been able to handle it, uh, but it also means significant investments in terms of the way we produce beer, mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, we do a significant amount of research in our own foundation uh, controlled Carlsberg Research Lab where we uh, do a lot of uh, scientific work into more climate resistant uh, crops and these types of things. But for me, uh, you can say when I look at the big sustainability programs that we run across the firm, it's especially things like uh, the, uh, our water resource uh, usage, uh, where we have some very ambitious targets. We already brought down our water usage by 30% across our breweries, and, um, and we're targeting uh, a significant reduction uh, further from here, despite being one of the most efficient already. So it is impacting our business. It's also impacting our packaging, which is a massive uh, uh, part of our carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. As you've said, you've, um, you've already made changes to produce your beer uh, more env uh, environmentally friendly, um, but to produce beer is a very water-intensive um, process. Um, how much water does it require to produce one litre of beer? So currently it uh, requires, if you look across all of our footprint, around two and a half litres per litre of beer. And that is some of the most efficient uh, uh, brewing you will find globally, as you would expect from one of the world's largest brewers. Our target is to go down to two. And in areas with water risk, our target is to go down to 1.7 to make sure that we are helping the uh, the ecosystem and the biodiversity around the, our, our breweries. Right now, the industry is is really on a, on a, on, a, on the right trend here, but there's so much more uh, to be done. When you look at our most efficient uh, breweries, they are down to 1.4, 1.5. Um, so there is there is a lot we can do still to uh, to move all of our breweries down. We have more than 80 breweries globally, and therefore there's a journey to get all of them down there. That's a really impressive target. So I I've heard that you know um you know in the past couple of years when there's been droughts and fires and things like that, and um, obviously it's it's really impacted um hop harvests. Yes. And um, you know, so some places are becoming kind of worse for crop uh, hop production. And um, I, I have heard of you know other breweries having to change their recipes and things like that. Is there a chance that some of our favourite beers might change in flavour? I think there is a chance that they will change in flavour, but not a lot. There's no doubt that uh, hops are a very sensitive. Um, um, uh, are very sensitive to climate change and uh, even small uh, uh, fluctuations in uh, in, uh, in normal um, in normal seasons can have a massive impact. The other element of this though is also science and you can say th the work we do in our research labs is also to make sure that one, we can cre uh, create more climate resistant uh, hops, but it's also around how do we mimic some of the features of hops in a more synthetic way, um, in a sustainable way, but more synthetic way so we, uh, so we can uh, mitigate this. But I am, uh, I am afraid that there's no way that if you look at the coming decades, this will not impact the, uh, the, the beer industry. Of course it will, and it will also maybe impact uh, uh, some of your favorite beers.
So thinking about all of these beers that you produce globally, um, obviously there, there is a current trend for um, alcohol-free, 0% kind of thing. Um, is that a trend globally or is it just something that we're seeing in Europe and, and how is that affecting um, your business? So alcohol-free is, uh, is one of the big growth drivers. It, it is, as you say, it's uh, uneven uh, globally. We see less of it in Asia, um, which is a big market for us, but we're seeing a lot of it in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. And also it's in uh, a big trend in the US. We're less present in the US, but so for us, the big uh, impact is in, in Europe. We've over the last two years, we've launched uh, 60 alcohol-free uh, uh, brews uh, globally. So it's a massive uh, thing for us. Um, and we've also come out with the um, uh, ambition that 35% of our total uh, beer sales should be uh, low or no alcohol by 2030. Uh, so this is a big trend. Um, there will still be a massive place for your classic beers, mm -hmm. but it's also important that we can cater to uh, the different locations because alcohol-free is not just a substitute, it's also an incremental um, um, uh, consumption. As an example, I would never um, at work drink an uh, alcoholic beer, um, but I would drink an alcohol-free beer, so it's an incremental uh, um, uh, consumption. Um, and with this current trend, are, you see, are, are people buying less beer or are people just buying more alcohol-free beer? No, so we are generally seeing, if you look at our volumes, uh, they are flat to uh, flat to small down in Europe. I think that's a public figure, don't worry. Um, uh, but we're still seeing higher volumes across uh, Asia, which is a massive growth market for us. So I, I wouldn't say that there, there is a there is a interplay between alcohol-free and and and, um, and normal beer. What we are seeing right now is there's no doubt that European markets are are pretty mature. People are uh, spending more money on less beers, uh, which means uh, from us, from our perspective, uh, means we are premiumizing mm -hmm. our portfolio, which is a big topic for us. Um, uh, we would, uh, we have a fantastic portfolio of higher premium beers, and uh, people are willing to spend a little bit more to get a higher quality um, uh, brand, and um, and that of course benefits the industries. And I guess that brings me to my final question. So looking forward to the future, um, how do you see the, the beer industry or the alcohol, alcohol industry widely um, changing over the next 10 years? Yeah, so we see, uh, we see a clear move towards uh, premium. So uh, a clear premiumization trend, which continues. The other element we're seeing is we will see continued strong growth of the beer uh, portfolios, uh, especially in emerging markets. But uh, the, big, uh, the big growth drivers will be what we call beyond beer and alcohol-free. So beyond beer here is your hard seltzers, your ciders, these types of drinks. And uh, you can say, well, we are moving into hybrids uh, between beer and other drinks. And that's a big market as well. For us, it's important that we can deliver uh, for the consumer choice. But there's no doubt you can say mainstream core beer as we know it, that will be a smaller and smaller uh, part of our overall portfolio, but still significant to be clear. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, it was wonderful to talk to you. Thanks for giving us your time today. And um, I look forward to trying more of the beer in the future. Perfect. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.